Welcome to the Hunt. Today I'm going to show all of you guys how to make a 50 pound block of ballistics gel. Yeah, Hook to Hunt has some broadheads to test out for this 2021 season and we need ballistics gel. And I'm not going to go out and spend $400, $500 for it. I'd rather go buy some toys that I can play with in the outdoors. So let's go through that process on how to make this ballistics gel. So let's hit the Mad Lab and we'll get it done. Oh shoot, we're here already, it's my kitchen. All right, let's start off with the ingredients. What supplies are you guys gonna need to make this gelatin? Well, most important ingredient is the gelatin, right? So I got six containers of Knox gelatin, each one being one pound, 16 ounces a piece. Now the proper ratio of water to gelatin is for every one ounce of gelatin, you need eight ounces of water. 16 ounces times six containers equals 96 ounces of Knox gelatin is what I have. So 96 ounces times eight ounces for how much water we need. We are going to need 768 ounces of water, which just so happens equals six gallons of water. So, real easy calculation. Each container of Knox gelatin, which is one pound container, equals one gallon of water. So, all said and done, when this is all done, you are gonna have yourself 54 pounds, roughly in that area, of gelatin. So, let's talk about the other supplies we need. So, here's the six containers that I got, all one pound a piece. You're gonna need yourself a vessel, right? A plastic vessel to put, or some type of container to put everything in. Right here, I got myself a 64 quart container. My vessel. I got a one gallon jug. I'll make it real simple to fill up my, my pots. And then over here, I got my pots. So my six gallons of water, I'm gonna put one gallon in the small container. I'm gonna have to boil them separately because I don't have a big enough pot for all of it. And then I'm going to have probably about five gallons or so, maybe a little less. I'll have to split them up and see exactly where I'm at, but I'm going to balance them out between those two containers. And hopefully I can get them all in those two containers. And then you're going to need something to stir everything up. Because what we're going to do is we're going to boil the water, and then we're going to stir everything. So make sure you have this all ready. I don't have an egg beater. What I did is I cut apart a bunch of fly swatters and took apart a cold gun and grab some duct tape and got a little redneck ingenuity here. Let her eat. She'll get the job done. All right, let's get that water. boil. Bring the heat.
weigh 50 pounds. Oh, man, feels like more than 50 pounds to me. All right, when you go to move this, make sure you put the lid on it. It adds more stability so the, so the whole container doesn't fold on you. Now I'll tell you that there is some chunks floating in there. I'm not sure if they'll fully dissolve due to the hot water. Uh, hopefully they do, but if not, hopefully I got enough mixed up where the consistency makes a pretty solid gel. I'm out of breath, I'm out of shape. Don't mind my puffing. But uh, you're gonna wanna leave this in here for a full 24 hours at least, and then you should be all set. All right. It's time to check out the ballistics gel. It is two days later, and uh, let's see what we got. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's fairly clear already. Um, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna actually get it out and test it today. We're gonna shoot some broadheads at it. But some key takeaways that I learned from doing a 50 pound block of this gel. One, Make sure anything that you have in the fridge is not gonna spoil on you real quick because it took over 48 hours to get that to, to bloom correctly. And when I put it in the fridge, for a whole entire day after I had it in the fridge, everything in the fridge was warm. Wife well, thought I broke the fridge. So, <laughs> just try to get a new fridge by the way, but it didn't work. All right, so another main takeaway, right? That block only with the, with the vessel, the plastic vessel that I put it in, is only five and a half inches wide. And I was hoping to stand this block on its side. And I don't know if that's gonna happen anymore. I probably should have made twice as much, um, or at least at very minimum, probably three gallons more to make it a little wider. But that would have been a hundred pound block. And then the question comes in, you know what I mean? The vessel you're putting on, is it strong enough to carry from one point A to point B? You'd have to figure that part out. But uh, that will probably happen next time. I'll be doing this again for sure next year for the same test. So next year, it's going to be a 100 pound block. But stay tuned, hook the hunt. If you guys find any of this information helpful whatsoever, please hit the thumbs up button. That helps us out, it helps YouTube out to know that you guys like this content. So hook the hunt, out.